Do you know what PDF stands for? Payload Distribution Format. Okay, not really. It actually stands for Portable Document Format, but PDFs are often associated with the distribution of malware, hence the joke. In this video, we're going to take a look at malicious documents, including a malicious PDF and a malicious Microsoft Word document. Now, this is nothing new or groundbreaking, and you'll find plenty of resources online that explain how to do this. However, this is a fundamental skill you must have if you want to perform malware analysis. We're going to take a slightly different approach and look at one malicious document embedded within another, with the inner document containing a macro that drops a malicious file. In our case, we're going to use a test document created by Didier Stevens. Although it isn't actually malicious, the analysis steps will be identical. By the way, if you aren't familiar with Mr. Stevens, you should be. He is the author of numerous digital forensics and incident response tools and blog posts, and I would consider him to be among the few rock stars within the DFIR community. You're looking at his website, to which I'll include a link in this video's description, and this is the file with which we'll be interacting in the second part of this video. So let's download this PDF and move over to our Linux box for analysis. For this section of the video, I'm using a Remnix virtual machine. Remnix is a free Linux toolkit for reverse engineering and analyzing malware. It runs on top of Ubuntu and contains a wealth of tools that will make your life much easier. As always, I'll include a link to this in the video's description. First, let me draw your attention to the two PDF files I have on the desktop. Good.pdf is a non-malicious PDF taken from my website, 13cubed.com. Evil.pdf is our pretend malicious file taken from Mr. Stevens' website. Our initial step will involve running a tool called PDF ID, authored by Mr. Stevens, and as the name may imply, this tool will help us quickly identify the properties of a PDF. If we bring up a terminal, you'll notice I'm already in the desktop and you see the two files. Let's run PDF ID against good.pdf. Now we'll especially want to pay attention to JavaScript and JS, which would indicate the PDF contains embedded JavaScript. This is often found in malicious PDFs. We'll also want to note open action, which prompts the PDF reader to take some action upon opening the file. And other potential red flags would be rich media, indicating the embedding of a flash program, launch, which instructs the PDF to launch external or embedded software, and URI, which may indicate interaction with a website. As you can see, the non-malicious PDF does not appear to have any of these properties. However, if we take a look at evil.pdf, we'll find a different result. As you can see here, we do see JS and JavaScript, we see an open action, and we also see an embedded file. These are red flags. Now, in the next section of the video, we're going to follow this up by using another tool created by Mr. Stevens called PDF Parser, which is our next logical step in analysis. PDF Parser will enable us to extract the embedded file contained within the PDF which in our case happens to be a Microsoft Word document. So let's take a look at that tool next. A PDF is composed of the following components, a header, a trailer, and sandwiched in between one or more objects and a cross-reference table that maps the offsets of the file's objects. The objects are where we'll find the meat of the file, including the text, fonts, graphics, JavaScript, and more. Now, we're not going to get into the details about a PDF's structure, but I'll include a link to the specification in the video's description if you'd like to learn more. Now, let's take a look at evil.pdf with PDF Parser. I'll go ahead and pipe the results through more, and when I do, you'll notice that we see a series of objects. These objects have an object number, which in this case is one, and a generation number, which in this case is zero. The first object I've highlighted says type catalog, and if you notice it references an embedded file by the name of eicar-dropper.doc, so that would certainly be of interest to us. 
As we continue to look at the different objects, we'll notice object 2, 3, 4. But if we scroll down, when we get to object 7, we'll notice it is of type file spec, and it's again referencing that same file name. It appears to also reference object number 8. Object 8 is of type embedded file. This particular object contains a stream. You'll notice the specified length and a filter that says flate decode. This is our encoded file that's embedded within the PDF. In this case, it's a Microsoft Word document. So what we can do at this point, now that we've identified the object of interest, let's go ahead and use PDF parser again. This time we'll specify object eight. We'll use the filter keyword to decode the stream. We'll use the raw keyword to display the output without escaping any special characters. And we'll dump this to a file called out.doc. When we do this, you notice we see the output of object eight on screen. And now we have out.doc. If we run file against out.doc, we'll notice that it is indeed an OLEV2 composite document file. So in the next and final section of the video, we'll take a look at this Word document and we'll extract the embedded macro that drops our malicious payload. Now let's take a look at one final tool from Didier Stevens, and that is OLE Dump. OLE Dump will help us extract embedded VBA macros from within our OLE or composite document format files. Now, out.doc is indeed a composite document format file, which is the older Microsoft Office file format. Newer Office documents are actually mainly comprised of XML files stored within a zip container. Interestingly though, macros in the newer Office document format files are still stored as OLE files within the zip container, which means we can still use OLE dump to extract those embedded macros. If we run OLE dump against our file without any options, we'll get 11 lines of output. We're mainly going to be focused on number seven, which has a capital M next to it. The lowercase m that you see next to number eight actually indicates that a VBA macro is present, but it's only composed of attribute or option statements and no other statements. So we're mostly going to be focused on the capital M. If we rerun the utility and this time select number seven and then use the VBA decompress option, we'll actually be able to extract the embedded macro. When we do that, you'll notice that a file is being opened and this sequence of bytes, as you see here, is being written to that file. At the very end, a message box is displayed that says EICAR test file written. Now this happens to be the EICAR antivirus test file, but we, for the purposes of our demo, will pretend like this is indeed our malicious code that is being written by this dropper. So this, of course, could be a malicious binary of some kind. So now let's quickly review what we've done. The first thing we did was run pdfid.py, and in our case, I didn't use any kind of options with it. But as you can see here from the help output, there are other things that we can do, especially displaying the dash E or dash dash extra option, which will display additional information. After we did that, the next thing we did was run pdfparser.py. With PDF parser, we actually used the dash dash object keyword, which of course can also be denoted by just dash O as you see here. We also used dash dash filter, which can also be expressed as dash F. And then we used dash dash raw. And as you can see here, dash dash raw can also be dash W. Then lastly, we actually dumped the file with dash dash dump or dash D could be used as well. After we did that, the last thing we did was run OLE dump. Initially, we ran it without any options. 
And then we actually ran it specifying the select parameter. Instead of select, we could also use the shorthand of dash S to select the stream. In our case, it was number seven. And then we used dash dash VBA decompress, which again can be expressed with just dash V. This allowed us to extract the embedded macro associated with stream number seven. Now at this point, we could start analyzing the dropped file using a variety of methods, but we'll save that for another video. That's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. We have used three different tools, all of which written by Didier Stevens, and those tools have helped us very quickly identify the embedded malicious content within the PDF. So that wraps up this video. As always, I would like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this. As you know, the Introduction to Malware Analysis series is new, and this is only the second video in that series. There will be plenty more coming. So look forward to those. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please do let me know. Please do like, subscribe, and share. And if you're able, please also consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Even one or two dollars a month is greatly helpful as it helps me pay for the hardware and the software that I use to create these videos. So again, thank you as always for your support and I will see you in the next video.